Hey, it was good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the road podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. I have DJ Neva. Yo, what's up? I got DJ D Miles. Yo, what's good, what's good? And we got Jamie the Great in the building. Yeah. What's good, fellas? This is our first time seeing each other after Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving, Jamie? You were the only one with family, right? Yeah, I was the only one with family, man. It was, uh, it was, it was, it, was, it sucked because usually we have like these big dinners and mm. Today was a tight knit. It was only five of us. My mom was not playing no games. Nobody got invited to the house. Yeah. And yeah, it was it, it was kind of sad, but it was cool because I was just with my family, my immediate family at that. Was it Mexican Last Thanksgiving? Week. What was it? <laughs> nah. <laughs> what do you mean? Was no. It like uh, instead of stuffing, was it tamales? What was it? <laughs> no, it's it was which <laughs> traditional cranberry you know, tamales? Turkey. I don't know. No, dog, no? that sounds nasty. No? <laughs> turkey, turkey stuff, turkey stuff tamales. Nah. Yeah. They um, put the tamales inside the turkey cavity no, inside. No, no, no. We had we had a traditional, you know, <laughs> just we had a lot of turkey. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> had tur- <laughs> we had turkey. We had mac and cheese. We had. Uh, mashed when, wait, potatoes. When did mac and cheese become the standard for Thanksgiving? That that wasn't a standard for Thanksgiving. It, it's it always been get, in my house. I mean, yeah, I feel like same man. My house, it was always mac and cheese is like a main side dish. Like if you see, cheese ain't right, it'll mess up the whole dinner. Really? Like, yeah. yeah. I think that's. Nah, a, but I, I come on, man. Be honest. You like? Nah, I I didn't have that to like the mid two thousands. Yeah, yeah. It really? was. It wasn't a thing. Yeah, it wasn't a thing early Dude, on. That's always been a thing in my house. I understand. Yeah. In, in a black family home <laughs> in America, mac and cheese yes. is definitely part. Mac and cheese of the comfort salad. food. Yeah, of the yeah. comfort food experience, right? <laughs> Collard greens. Okay, Collard but greens. what I'm trying to say is that a lot of like it wasn't a standard to have a mac and cheese in the Thanksgiving shit. That wasn't part. That oh. like all of a sudden that got inserted recently. I feel like. Do you yeah. think it's been inserted more like on a national scale? Yeah, like I never like, saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never saw Asian families and white families making mac and cheese for th- for Thanksgiving. Like that's a new shit. I don't for think me. they know how to make mac and cheese. Nah, like, yeah, see, I, I yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> they I get the mac you. and cheese from the bots and. The craft. Yeah, craft. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Is there really only one way to make mac and cheese? One way? No. There's no, got to be there's, tons there's of ways. multiple ways. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I do, like, if I'm making it, because I'm pretty good at it, I ain't going to lie. Like, uh, I soak, I soak well, the noodles. Do we should do a mac and cheese. Um, <laughs> mac like and a mac off. Off? <laughs> I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. I'm man. down. I, I can't give up. I can't give up my recipe then because me and Nevin go at it. <laughs> exactly. I gotta say this. I gotta say wait, this. Wait, wait, wait. Can I just ask what are the cheeses you put in there? Um, there's different. So I, I always grate my own cheese. Okay. So Ooh. I'll do like a sharp cheddar, mm-hmm. uh, yellow, yeah. and I do one white, and then um, I actually uh do my na- my noodles with a uh, like a raw egg. And then um, I'll do like uh, half and half either like condensed milk or like a heavy whipping cream for the okay. thickness. Uh, there's there's a bunch of little things. You, gotta, I do you have too, to like create a rule though, right? Don't you? Don't you have to create a rule? No rule, no rule. No, no rules, man. Rule. You can do whatever. You can put as much cheese as you want. No, but don't Cheesy. you create the rule to create the cheese sauce? Like you got to make a rule to create the nah, cheese. Nah, you just I, I just cut up the cheese and put it into put it in the mac macaroni. Like and like D said with the condensed milk. See, I think y'all doing it fucked up. I think y'all doing it fucked up. That doesn't. No, no, we gotta have it. We gotta have it. No, you can create the rule. You can create the rule, which would be like the condensed milk, cheese, um, maybe like some some sea salt and pepper, butter, butter. butter. Yeah, you gotta create the rule. No flour. No flour. 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 What are you talking about? To thicken the thing. No, no, we have to. I like to. I like to do mine. I like create it and then I put it in the oven and let it form a crust. On the top. Yeah, Ooh, that's, that's better removed. So I have a question, removed. like, what? Because because black people are like notorious for shitting on every race's mac and cheese, right? Yeah. There's yeah. only one way that black people want mac and cheese. Let me know if I'm wrong. It's the 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 kind of like crust on the top, right? Mm-hmm. Little, and yeah. then when you cut into it, it should stick together as in slices. Like it shouldn't oh, fall apart. Almost like right? a, almost like a slice of a cake or something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yes. yeah. But I came front. I've had some bomb mac and cheese in some Latin households mm-hmm. that that is in a pot, like not like on a like cake, like in a like style where you have to cut it out of the out of the thing, like just right. scooping it out of the pot. You know what I mean? That's Ooh. how they make it in my house. It's just a pot and you scoop it out. It's not in a cast like it's not like a casserole thing. It, it does. It's not like a lasagna kind of right. right. No, no, no. It's right. not a lasagna. No, in my household, it's a pot. It's but, a pot. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, and in a black household, I assume it's a like a lasagna. I had one from a Latin household that was a little spicy, you know. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. That's like a little jalapeno flavor to right. it. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wasn't mad at that. I say like a mac and cheese. Should I mean this is so stupid? Why are we talking about this? Right now? <laughs> Shut up. I feel like it's a good a- mac and cheese should be kind of like you know it shouldn't be like this brick that everyone's slicing in and like that looks fucked up to me. But everyone says that's how mac and cheese should look. Am I wrong? Yeah, it, it depends. Because yeah. even if you go to a soul food restaurant, you're going to get your mac and cheese a lot different from if you go to like a barbecue spot mm-hmm. yeah. or like a real restaurant. We need to break this down spreading. because I, I don't know where motherfuckers started inserting this mac and cheese shit where that had to I be part love, of Thanksgiving. I ain't going to lie. I would love to have a cook off with Neville. That would be- Yeah, yeah I want to have that so bad. <laughs> wait, wait. Can I, can I get in on this? I'll do my bougie mac and cheese with my roll. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let's do this. And by I'm the, the way, judge. I'm the judge. By the way, if you don't have Gouda cheese in there, I don't respect you. Do you understand? Like if, you put, yeah, see? if you put chet, like two types of you go, cheddar. You're going, you going exotic. You're going exotic. Good exotic. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> you bougie. <laughs> no. This is a Korean mac and cheese. I'm going to put. You got the, we used to do, you used to do it with the welfare um, cheese, man. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the days. I'm going to say Gouda. The government cheese. Wait, so. I don't think I- if someone making mac and if someone's making mac and cheese with Velveeta, that's a no, right? That's a no. Hey, that's a no, no. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, I can't, I can't do it. You, know. you want to go to the bathroom fast after that one? What would your, yeah. what would your, what would your parents or your mama do if 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 the girl that you brought came over? She said like, I'm gonna make some mac and cheese, and she had macaroni the and, and the Velveeta. Well, my mom would definitely be talking shit, <laughs> and my grandmother would be talking shit. <laughs> my mom, the whole too. family would be talking shit. Yeah. My mom would probably kick her out the fucking kitchen and be like, "Yo, get out of here." Interesting. It's, just, it's, one, it's one of those things. Yeah. And, and you can't fuck up on a potato salad either, man. Have potato you, salad in a black household is like the holy grail. Like yeah, it is. If you can't make potato salad, they shun you. It depends like, what, kind of, what kind of potato salad y'all talking about. It and that's to, like family reunions. It has to be red potatoes, right? Yeah. Red, oh, red, red potatoes. potatoes. Red potatoes. No, no, no. It, it, it could be, be, but it doesn't not. necessarily need to be. Red potatoes are the best potatoes for potato salad. Not it's for a black motherfucker. <laughs> This bougie motherfucker. This other guy. If you say yellow, golden Yukon potatoes are for a uh, potato salad, you're crazy. That's good for mashed potatoes. And uh, then, I think, uh, I think uh, curb- nah, man. To which is own, Craig. Nah, because yeah. they crumble easier. All of the these rest, crumble. The, the red ones. The red ones stay. They they keep their shape. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But you don't want that. I don't know about D, but I don't like it when it's like a cube of potato. You gotta have it mashed up a little bit. Yeah, mashed up is the key to go. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, See, for me, what's important is just. What the ingredients that come in with it, like that that flavor. I need that flavor. And you leave like this, some you leave some like a little some like a little salty, some like a little sweet. Yeah, you know, it just kind of depends. It's got to be a little like sour, sweet, and salty. Yeah, and creamy. Yeah, it has to be salty. Creamy. It has to be all of those things, right? Yeah, yeah. I know what I'm talking about. You've had my potato not- salad, never. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we used to do barbecues at your crib. You had my potato salad. You loved that. I've been shit. To, I've been to a few of those barbecues. <laughs> you love my potato salad. The, the big chunky um potatoes though, nah, man. Come on, I, oh. see, I, I ain't gonna lie. I've, I've been over there a few times where Cookie really threw down, so I can't. I, I gotta give me this flowers like, a little bit. And this is not to shit on Cookie. Cookie's a great chef. Not I remember one time you made these turkey sliders that were fire. Oh yeah, looking turkey, and then you did like never, a, did like a big ass steak. Never remember we used no, to make I all types of shit. I'm just saying the potato salad. I never said you wasn't a bad cook. My potato salad is nasty. Come on, I mean in a good way. Nasty. Don't front. My macaroni salad's good. I never made mac and cheese. I don't know, but it's like it it became a thing this year. Where I saw it's been a thing. Is it? It's, it's been, been a, a hot thing for like the last five years. It's been I've a never seen piece. Asian families making mac and cheese for Thanksgiving. That's some new shit for me, man. Like, nah, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. are they making it now? That's yeah, trying. It's, a, yeah, they trying. it's 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 a thing that they post on the Instagram. That was the one play everybody posts on the Instagram. Mm-hmm. So it's crossed yeah. over. It's crossed over. Bella yeah. Fiasco put her, her her mac and cheese on the gram. I was like, her Whoa. recipe? Did she yeah, make no, it? She made a full feast. I almost I almost said she make it a bite. It looked like it was made at her house. It looked like it was catered. Nah, I'm joking. Nah. <laughs> Bella, I'm just joking with you. <laughs> yeah, if Bella catered that, that's a good cater, man. Uh, what do you call it? So everyone, you guys didn't cook, right? Nah, man. No, I no, stayed no. in the I made, no, I made I made potato salad. I made mac and cheese. Yeah. I had half a turkey breast. That's like that's like the typical stuffing. the typical I'm lonely and I'm a bachelor when you cook the the tur- this the, the turkey breast. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know what? My thing was the turkey wings. Oh, I saw the a lot of that. Wings. The turkey wings is fire, man. They come huge. You can break them up into before. portions. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not about size, yo. It's not about size. Yeah. It's about taste. That was me and, that was me and my mom's go-to when it would just be me and her for Thanksgiving. It would just be turkey wings and all the sides. I never yeah. had turkey wings. I must try. Was it was yeah, it hard man. for you guys not to be around family and not to see family this year? It's like a first, right? It was hard, but I think my family made me a little more comfortable because they were adamant about me not going. Yeah. So if, if they would have been like, come, 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 and I'm like, nah, I can't, I would have felt even worse. Yeah. But the fact that they were on board and were like, no, nah, we get it. Like, we don't want you flying. You know, my grandmother's older. You know, mm-hmm. my mom is in her 60s now. So it's like, you know, everyone's just being cautious, and I respect that. It, it made me feel a lot more at ease just to be home and knowing yeah. that, you know, everyone's cool with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, yeah. Nav? Well, I usually try to go to New York during Christmas. Yeah. Like, I usually stay in Vegas on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. But this year, I'm probably, I'm most likely going to be in Vegas for Christmas. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be kind of tough. I know. But you know, like, it is, man. when I first moved out here to Vegas, the stories I would hear about the Thanksgivings in Vegas would mm-hmm. never, and Eddie McDonald, shout to Eddie Mac. Mm-hmm. These motherfuckers would get, like, have Friendsgiving and get wasted. Yo, we I had, like, a huge up. Thanksgiving dinner at my house. Like, the first year I bought my house. Yeah. And I had everybody come over and shit, man. And, and we had, like, a huge feast. We all got fucked up. That was the night I dj at light, and I, I got wasted. <laughs> I cut the equipment off before the club was closed. Yeah. Oh, God. He shut he oh, shut off his laptop at, like, 3 a.m. and just left. And no, 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 it was... Did I have a laptop back there? Yeah. Yeah, no, had to be, no, had yeah. To... They said you shut you're off. Right, the... Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I did have the yeah. laptop. Yeah, never. Motherfucker was never drunk. Was, <laughs> never was DJing for some reason. The dance floor was packed, and in his head, he thought it was lights up and closed his laptop, <laughs> packed up his shit, and left. And the whole I didn't dance leave. Floor, no, I cut everything off, and it was like, "Yo, what you doing?" I'm like, "Oh shit!" Wow. <laughs> Get back. <laughs> and then it was so funny. At the end of the night, I kind of sobered up, and everybody was looking at me. And security guards are like this. Yeah, it was like shaking their head, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit!" So when I moved to Vegas, never was the reason they 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 made a new rule: no DJs can drink, and it was because of never. <laughs> Fucking never! Oh man, that sucks. And he didn't that even sucks. get fucked up at the club. He got fu- he was already fucked up going. Yeah, that should be I got, happening. I got worse when I got to the club. Yeah, it got worse. Never and Eddie, you never. You guys would always make you always used to do some crazy shit and then all of us used to pay for it all the djs we'd be like yeah <laughs> sounds about right <laughs> yeah. they were like they'd be coming in you know be crazy like they coming in late or something or fucked up they'd be like yo now everyone has to show up 30 minutes remember they <laughs> remember they when they wanted to us to wear dress shoes and shit they wanted yeah. us to dress in like a suit and tie yeah. or some shit when we did yeah, i remember a certain but company like, gave up like a dress code like, it was like a button-up shirt exactly like, yeah no That's baggy right. jeans yeah no hats, Damn. like hard bottom shoes. Was it yep. the one with like a fedora? Uh, like you had to wear a fedora or something? If you wore a hat, it had to be like a fedora or like no baseball cap. Yeah, that didn't. Remember I gave like an excuse. I was like, "Yo, I have, I had like bad ankles. I couldn't wear a dress shoes or some shit." I said, <laughs> "Bad ankles, <laughs> crazy, <laughs> some nut shit." Hey, yo. So, did you guys see this Mike Tyson Roy Jones Jr. fight? Did you guys see this? Yeah. Am I the only? I didn't see the fight. You didn't see it? Am I the only asshole that paid fifty dollars for this? I am. Yeah, right? loser. Shit, you, I sent you, you bought the, the pay per view. <laughs> yeah, he did. I fucking sent a link. He's like, I just ordered it. I'm like, why did you do such? Thing? It was worth every penny. It was worth every penny. It was That's not it worth it. Was it really? <laughs> I, was, I was watching it, and then after like French Montana came, started performing. I cut it off. I'm like, dude, I. I, I Yo, YG's performance could have been kept at home. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Wait, what? YG performed too. YG, YG performed about 20 minutes, and none of the songs that we knew were put on display that night. YG literally just performed all of the new music that nobody wanted to hear in 2020, and that nobody knew. That's like crazy. that, he made a record called Swag. Yeah, and he oh, I know that. It. I know yeah. that song. Yeah, it, yeah, it's not good. G. It's not that, good. That, that beat is actually not horrible. Yeah, it's not. It's not that great either. <laughs> Is that the song where he? What was the song he kept doing? Gunshots. He kept kept hearing gunshots. Let's say, he, and, he swag, didn't, swag. and the thing he didn't introduce no song like this is my next record or this is it was just song like if we Yo, knew what song it was that shit looked really ghetto man I, that fight looked ghetto it was just like what did French perform he did anything that we knew unforgettable he started with eight about nine. Yeah, yeah. I was watching some some fight critics and they were actually saying that they thought the fight was good. Like, Which one? Like, they thought it was entertaining. The, the Tyson Jones fight. Oh no, that was entertaining. That was really entertaining because Snoop Dogg made it fun too. Yeah, Snoop, Snoop Dogg's Dogg commentary it. was a one. Like me, that that's I watched. What, that's what I kept hearing hearing about Snoop, Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Dogg's Snoop Dogg's performance and his his commentary was great. I don't know. I didn't know anything about this Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson shit. 
Oh, mm-hmm. that that that's been going on since like around May. That that beef, quote unquote, has been going on. So since who like is Nate May. Robinson? Because the only thing I recognized him from is that he did like a, a tour of Stevie Oki's house or some shit. I remember that. Nate Robinson? Yeah, he had like a, a TV show of like going to motherfuckers' cribs on YouTube really? and checking out oh. their cribs. Yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah, I just know him from from the NBA because yeah, was, that's he what played I know the NBA from. from I would say the mid two thousands to like maybe 2015, 16. Was he, he was good? Yeah, for, he, yeah, he was. Yeah. Like was he, he was like one of the sh- he was one of the smaller players. He's, he's probably like my height, a little bit taller. But Dude, he won the dunk contest three times. Of, yeah, and he he was famous for dunking over Dwight Howard at the dunk contest. Yeah, he mm. boy got hops. Yeah, he's pretty yeah, nasty. He was in the NBA for like eleven years or some shit like yeah. that. It was a yeah. long, long, long career. So when, nice when, career. When, when did he retire? Like two years Ooh. ago. Yeah, I want to say like twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen. So yeah. so it's safe to say he's trying to find a life after the NBA, right? Yeah. So what uh, is he currently doing right now? I like honestly, a lot of the NBA players are still like they're doing like weird shit. Yeah, like, well, he was actually playing. He was actually playing in the big three. Oh, and he was, was in the going. big three. He yeah, was in the big yeah, three, yeah. which is Ice Cube League. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, he was doing that for like the last two years, but I didn't, I had no idea he was even in the fighting. So when I saw the bill, I was like, "What, Nate Robinson?" Yeah, fighting? but That's I was. Crazy. Like, why would he do this? Because I, I was looking at how much they got paid. They didn't get paid shit. Jake Paul is a YouTube star, right? Yeah, he's yeah. a he's a brother of uh, the the Paul brother. I forget this. Yeah, Logan so, Paul. So wait, oh, okay, okay. They're YouTube stars, right? They do. Yeah, YouTube yeah, they're YouTube shit, right? stars. Yeah. So Jake Paul and Nate Robinson both got six hundred dollars each. I think it's six hundred k. There was a mistake on that. That's not, there's mistake. no way it's six hundred k. There's no way it's six hundred dollars. I think it's six hundred dollars because it's, it's like they're using this platform for fame. They're using it no. for advertising and marketing. No, uh, fam, fam, look, look, like Mike Tyson got paid a million, and then uh, Jones got paid a million, and then this damn two. And then everybody kind of breaks down or bunks that. They wouldn't put them right there if they got six hundred dollars, and everybody got paid thousands of dollars. And it makes no have, sense. Them two have money also. They, yeah, they but that's why. That's why. Like, dollars. why would Nate go in the ring to do this? I don't. He didn't even train that well. Yeah. Like what was? Yeah. He looked awful. Like he looked <laughs> awful. Like he was mean. Yo, he called him out. <laughs> uh, Nate Robinson called Jake Paul out. He's like, "Yo, you beating me is gonna be the biggest thing in your career ever." And he beat him pretty bad and pretty fast. Yeah, but, but yeah. he wasn't even ready. Yeah. Like he had no yeah. defense. He was. Yeah. He was. There was doing, no sense of direction. He was doing no these, like these punch lunges and just like, it's like, like it was crazy. Yeah, he was like a school kid fighting. In a, in a, in a, in a yeah, he was squab. trying to squabble. He was trying to squabble. He it was. was it was worse than that. It was like you know when you like you come home and like a German Shepherd greets you and they jump on you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. It was like that with like a huge dog greet you when you come home. Yo, it was really I bad. Feel bad man, because no, but I want to know why he did this. Because... Why did he do this? Because he wanted to find a life after after I, yeah, NBA. I think, it, I think for most athletes in general, they're just such competitors that when their career is done in one thing, they just can't turn that competitive juice off and they find something else to be competitive at. Uh, and I think this that was his it. thing. He was like, let this me give this boxing it. thing a try. Yeah, but who, who I want to know who's yeah. on his team. Like, who's with him that's saying, like, yo, you ready? <laughs> like, can you imagine that? Like, <laughs> yo, like, imagine he's yo, training. He was, he was probably thinking, yo, I could beat this white boy up. It's yeah, that's what problem. he said. That's what he said. That's how he you called know, him out. I don't need out. to train. It's a white dude. I could beat him. Wow. <laughs> and he had hide on him, too. Uh, Paul There's nothing worse for a brother him. than to get beat up by a white boy. That's like the like the nightmare of every black dude. Yeah, man. Dude. Did Stinky Fingers got fucked up a um, couple of years ago, a long time ago? Who did he get fucked up by? Someone on MTV, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was like an MTV. Wasn't fight. it the guy who who hosted the grind or something? I, f- I forgot who it was. You know whoever who it was, right? they beat him up. He got fucked up. <laughs> but not as bad as um, Nate Robinson. <laughs> Yo, he was sleep, bro. Simon Woodstock. He fought Simon Woodstock. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. The scary thing is he was sleep for like two minutes. No, he was out, bro. He was out. He was knocked the fuck out. I talked to one of my boys that that actually works with him in shooting, like uh, when he was still playing. Like shooting, and like, I was like, like bro, like, like, like he was shooting, a shooting coach oh, for him, okay. yeah. Shooting coach, okay. And he was like, like bro, I don't know what happened. He was like, I know Nate. I know he trains hard. He was like, I know that dude trains hard. He's not like gonna take it half ass. I don't know what happened when he got in the ring. Like, Probably got he scared. Like he no? was not prepared. Like you, that it, shit happens when you get scared. You just like you, like, yeah. All the training, the, mo- just the goes moment, out. the lights, yeah. yeah. I feel like the training just went out the window, like because that's what it looked like. It looked like, I swear to God, like like it's, it's that famous Tyson quote that uh, 
Uh, you have a plan to get punched in the face. Yeah, everyone yeah. has a plan to get punched in the mouth. Yeah, everybody that has a plan. Real. To... <laughs> she's real. Bro, he walked he into said... the knockout. That shit was crazy. I he mean, lunged himself into the that, knockout. That was his yeah, whole thing. That, that, first knockout. that was his whole strategy. The whole thing was just lunging, lunging, punching, and not like there's no defense at all. Yo, yo the memes, though, the memes are vicious. <laughs> the oh, internet does all, not let out. All day yesterday. <laughs> That's how you saw it was a fucking neighbor. Dude, it was like memes for like mattress sales for, for like companies for mattresses. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like the one where they had Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and like two old black ladies looking at him like, your ancestors are <laughs> definitely disappointed that you got knocked out. <laughs> Yo, you see the one where it was like the old Muhammad Ali where he's like holding his arm after he knocked out Sonny Liston? Yeah. I didn't see that one. And then it was like, this going to be in white barbershops for like the next 20 years. Yeah, like, they were, they white were, boy. They were putting Jake Paul with Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah man. That shit is just Oh, man. Oh, what about he was even moment? trolling those, bro. He, he was trolling. He had on Nate Robinson's jersey. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. He took was a that an old pick? <laughs> nah, that's I, I didn't see that either. Fuck that. Yeah, he was trolling, bro. I love I love the Sonic one when he got hit and he got knocked down. The little Sonic rings came about, like it was <laughs> old school video game. That was great. Bro. I think this is good for Nate Robinson though. Like he's a household name now. Yeah. Like I don't know. I wouldn't have known. Who not the in fuck a good way. <laughs> not in a good way. Bro. I think he could spin this shit. Like so, what he got fucked up. I yeah, didn't he. Yeah. He replied on Instagram. He posted that uh, that scene in Friday. Oh yeah, like, you win, you win you some, win. you lose some. <laughs> but you live, you live. You should have been better off just not saying anything. Yeah. I love the fact that he still has his sense of humor, though. I ain't gonna lie. Like, well, I don't know yeah. how to handle that. I would have been, I would have been hiding under a rock for like a week. I think this is good for him because he's like a he's like a household name now, man. Now you I want to see who he's gonna go up against next because there's somebody gonna be like, if. You know, he can't fight. Let's make a mockery out of him. And Crooked, you, Crooked, you're right. Like, if he fights again, I'm tuning in. Yeah. I'm tuning in, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, good or bad, he I want to see. <laughs> he could create a YouTube channel of him training for his next fight. And, yes, he and, could. And, have every, and then if he wins his next fight, everyone will shut the Dude. fuck up. Yeah. yeah. YouTube is going well, up, People will way. tune in just to see if he's going to get knocked out again, for sure. Yo, I wouldn't even mind seeing a, a rematch. A yeah. Fight. You know what's the <laughs> weird thing? Is it, boxing is like it's on its way out a little bit, right? It's done. It's a dying um, industry. It's like golf a little bit, right? It's not. It's not as popular as it well, once golf was. Is so popping though, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It's not as popular as it once was, but yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of networks, like even HBO. HBO doesn't have boxing anymore. Mm. It's all yeah. Showtime and uh, the Zone. Count. So, do, wow. yeah. Do you think this is the future where it's going to be more celebrity boxing? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's entertaining because they have a following, so they can have yeah. people tune in. Yeah. This like, is the second time a Jake Paul fights, by the way, in the last, I want to say, year, year and a half. Wasn't Mayweather's, brother. wasn't Mayweather's daughter, like, talking shit about this whole thing? Like, it, this is making a mockery of the boxing of, of the Oh, really? Boxing I, I didn't see that, that but I, I, I assume that a lot of boxers do feel the same way. And it takes away from big fights, like, next week coming up, yeah. or this weekend, I believe. It's going to be a Spencer uh, versus Garcia fight, which is two big, good uh, uh, boxers. And they kind of they're kind of following up what happened this past weekend. So it's it just it kind of like shunned a little bit uh, out of the light for them. But I think this I think this helps. I mean, it's sad, but I think this helps the boxing industry like it really does. I think it does, too, because even when Mayweather fought McGregor, that was a big deal. And I think that that wasn't a mockery, bro. That was. Yeah, a, that was but that I was, think. That it was, was like, a little bit of a like. It was no, kind of, well, McGregor's in it kind of was. That was kind like, of a shit McGre show. Mc McGregor's trolling did make it a shit show, but McGregor is a fighter. He's a real fighter. Yeah, but so the it's whole, not far off. But the whole These guys thing, are the like whole, a YouTuber and a fucking basketball star. No, but is the not. but the Mayweather's daughter talking shit about like this this type of exhibition is like is crazy because you know her dad fucking fought an MMA fighter, so like right. for me like that that's just this like. That's just this, like, what do you call it? That's just a, uh, it's like hype, right? It's just like. Yeah, you know, I see what you're saying. Kirk. It's it's hype. And plus it's like the, the MMA fighter is white, right? So it's like it. whenever <laughs> there's a white against black boxer or fighter, it's always going to make more money, right? Yeah, that that element is always, even like for, even for like Latinos and like Filipinos or like Latino versus black or you yeah, know it's, I mean? always it's always. Thing. Yeah, it's always like that sense of pride that comes with your with your race right. that you want to see your side win. It's yeah. always blacks and Mexicans, Filipinos and Mexicans, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans. Those are the the main three. Except Jake yeah. Paul. Jake Paul had like no white people behind his back. Like no. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he used this because he released the song. So this was his like 
his rollout to that's, his new song. That song oh, was man. horrible. That song was but really dude, bad. If you if you look at them size wise, he was so much bigger than Nate Robinson. Pause. Uh, yeah, pause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jake like, Paul is a they, lot taller. Yeah. Yeah, a lot taller, way heavier, uh, longer reach. Like I thought for some reason I thought he was skinnier than Jake Paul. Nah, he just gained all that weight recently. Or? That motherfucker's been training. Like he's yeah, taking it Yeah. He's, he's I was watching ESPN serious. and even they were saying they're like, yo, like he takes that shit serious. You could tell he's been training. Yeah. Like yeah. he was he was ready. He His was condition ready. is there. His condition is there. Because he would have gassed out. Like, look at uh Roy Jones Jr. and fucking Mike Tyson. They're gassed out the first round. Nobody yeah. even talked about that fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That fight was hey, good too. You know what's crazy though, is I saw some of the highlights and um Tyson hit him with a couple of them body shots. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he was, you could tell like Jones tensed up. Like he was like, oh shit. Like nah. I haven't felt no heat like that in, in some years. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I think they knocked the win out of him a few times. No, I think Roy Jones was like scared, man. He was scared to get no, hit. No, he kept holding <laughs> on to him. Yeah, that was his his little, his strategy was to grapple him Defense, the whole that's for eight <laughs> rounds. It was yeah, literally he, a grapple. That was his whole thing. And yeah. All that Roy Jones Jr., all those old moves, you know? Yeah. Them shits don't work when you're 50 years old, man. That motherfucker yeah. is not quick. He was just, he looked like. Commentators the no-look no no hair was funny. As Commentators well. were saying that too, because they're like, yo, his his whole career was built on like speed. Yeah, he don't have it. And he, he it. don't have it. Nah, but have Tyson it. was career was built on like technique and, and power. It yeah. is like, you can be old and still have your power. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And he, he showed it. Like he hit him with a few of them body shots, bro. And Tyson's, Even I could, it, Tyson's footwork was better. Like, Yeah, yeah it's way yeah. better. It was he crazy. was moving. Yeah, he, he was, was moving. moving boy. It looked weird as fuck. It looked like, you know, when you're playing he, video he, games. He, he did and that. The, yeah, and he the, was moving. And your player gets stuck a little bit. Like, and so you uh -huh. move the shit. Like, that's what Tyson looked like. It was like, <laughs> and then, like, he got into it. <laughs> Yo, yeah, he, kept, he kept trying to do that setup, that that body to the face punch, yeah. like double hook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't landing, bro, because that was his move on the video game, on the, on the knockout mm -hmm. game. That was Mike his, Tyson that was, punch out. Yeah, punch out. That yeah. was the, that was the move, and that was his, his move. But he wasn't landing that second punch. He just kept hitting the good body shots. Yeah, you could tell when, Roy Jones Jr. was he, he was done. He he, he was even, gassed out. The ref was even telling him like, "Yo, you got to stop holding. You got to stop holding." And then and Roy Jones was like, "Yo, <laughs> if I stop holding, he start hitting. I, I don't want to do it. I don't wanna, <laughs> he like, he's like, I don't want to get hit by that shit, yo. That yeah. shit was isn't, that, isn't that crazy that even like." A 55 year old Tyson, or however old it is, is Fuck still just that, mad bro. intimidating. Yeah, yeah. Like, that shit is still scary to people, bro. Even to a professional fighter like Roy Jones, he still was like, What did I get myself into? By the way, uh, yeah. Mike Tyson was high off of weed the whole fight. He just announced really? that today. Yeah. Oh, really? He announced that today. Yeah, yeah. He was high the whole time. He's probably promoting his weed brand. Well, he's doing, suppose he's doing like a, a weed resort in Palm Springs. Yeah, he's got a uh, Tyson Ranch. Yeah, he's doing that big shit. Wow. So, yeah. He's, he's big on the weed. He's he's big on the weed. I think he might make more money on the weed industry than he ever did boxing. Yo, yeah. I, I think it's hilarious how this new generation thinks that Mike Tyson's a centered, humble person. Like now. Oh no, they, no, no. That motherfucker was a fucking monster. Bam. Like yo. I yo, I never forget. This was probably I was probably like 18 years old. And I was in LA. And you know, I was in a barber shop. And you know how barber shops are mad loud, people talking shit. Yeah. And just kind of like enjoying themselves. I never forget, man. Mike Tyson walked in and the entire barbershop went quiet. <laughs> like you could hear a fucking pin drop. Like everyone was so shook. And just he just walked in with this like put pit bull look in his face. Like he was like looking for somebody to punch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody in that motherfucker was quiet, bro. Can, 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 Yo, just, can I just get a little off the top and just like keep the sides a little inside? <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yo, I remember <laughs> one night I was DJing at Jet. And it was late, and like you know, when people in the DJ quick, you know, in the DJ booth, when people can like type you in the shoulder, yeah, and they like bother you. And I was like getting pissed off, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck you want to turn around? And it was Mike Tyson. <laughs> 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 the bitch came out of me. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> sorry, Mike. What's up, man? What's up? What man? do you want? What do you want to hear? And he gave me a pound. His hand is like so fucking heavy. I'm like, oh shit. Oh my god. He wanted to hear some too short. <laughs> Jesus oh Christ. Can I hear no, Naughty by Nietzsche? Everything's going to be all right. Can you hear that? <laughs> yo, I'm, I'm used to like his, like him telling people like, yo, I'm going to fuck you in the ass. Da, da, da. Yeah. I'm like, dude, this guy's too calm. going to make you love me. You're going to love me. Oh, he love was me. like, he was like, I want to eat your kids. Like, yeah, he was I'm saying some crazy stuff. That was like, you know, he, he didn't get like that until after he got out of jail. 
Yeah. Look at you, ho. That's when he like became Look at like you, that. ho. You want to kiss me. You want to kiss me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going <gonna, laughs> to fuck you till you love me, punk. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're so good with that one, bro. I'm going to eat his kids. Oh, my God. I'm going to eat his kids. The best was like after his first fight and he was like heavy Muslim. Yeah. And he was he trying to be like. On. And he was trying he to be like. He's like, assalamu alaikum to Allah. What? Like talking. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy was like, oh my how do you God. feel about oh, you this be- fight? Y'all remember when he got into a fight in front of um Dapper Dance? Yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. About that. He fucked up Mitch Green. <laughs> yeah. Wait, when was this? That was this in New like York. In, that was in New, New York, York, like at eighty nine. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. It was, it was like in the middle of the night too. Like, like when like, he was yeah. like the, he was on top. He was like nobody could beat him at that time. Yeah. And him and Mitch Green was like was fighting in front of um Dapper Dance shop, and he knocked Mitch Green out on the streets of Harlem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that story. He says that on his podcast. He said it with Nori. Uh, oh, yeah, talked he about, yeah, that he, was he a big deal in New York. It was like, do you do you listen to his podcast, the Mike yeah, Tyson I do. podcast, the hot boxing? Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's so good. He doesn't he like cry? He, he has so much emotions in every episode, right? Yeah, yeah very emotional thing. It, it's it touches his like he's very emotional on his podcast. It's really really good. Like he'll be, be like crying one second and then he'll look like a fucking murderer the next, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like if I was, ba- when I'm in the ring, you know, I just want to tear his heart out. I just want to kill him. I want to I wanna just rip his throat out and shit on his family. And, it, and then all of a sudden he starts crying. But you got to respect the fighters so much, you know. And he's like, he's like really emotional. He whines a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember no, one time a, I was watching podcast. it and he was like, yo, some days I just feel like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if I should cry or laugh. Like he, he his emotions just changed so fast. Because I'm a conqueror. Because yeah. I'm a conqueror. I'm Alexander the Great. That's what he always like, says. Yo, right? I missed the old, I missed yeah. the old me. I'm old, I missed the old Mike, but I know if yeah. I bring the old Mike out, hell's coming with him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bro. It's, I love this podcast. Yeah, him and, yeah, it's a good fucking podcast. You guys should listen. It's to wow, it. man. It's, it's fucking crazy. crazy the stories that he talks about, like Tupac hanging out with Tupac and all this shit, and fucking all these girls and giving out BMWs and like it was crazy. Dude, it was he, nuts. Man. He blew like half a billion dollars, right? Did he? Fam, more. He his Robin Givens took the other half. <laughs> really? <laughs> Fucking uh, what's his yeah, name? Don man. King took I'm some of it too. Where is Robin Givens? Where the fuck is she? <laughs> She's still acting. Showing. Where? Yeah, she does She's Broadway like movies and shit, like TV shows. Yeah, she does like off Broadway <laughs> plays and stuff. Really? Like CSI yeah. Cincinnati or some shit? Like what? Well, think about it. Tyson was getting 20, 30 mil for a fight back then. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. In like the mid nineties. Well, that's no, barely like what in fighters, the eighties, man. Eighties in the eighties. Eighties. Late eighties. Twenty thirty mil in the eighties. He was getting, and that's what fighters might be. Some of the top tier fighters might get that now. Yeah, he was getting that shit back then. It's crazy. Before he went to jail, because he got locked up in ninety two. Wait, do you consider Roy Jones Jr. a better fighter than Mike Tyson? Of Hell course no. not. No, no, man. <laughs> really? I don't, know, Fuck man. No. I don't know. I was I was thinking about this earlier. Yo, pound you wildin', man. No, pound for pound. <laughs> you wildin'. I, I'll say this. No, think, you, you tripping, I think, and I love no, no, boxing. I, I'll Roy's say this. Amazing. I think Roy Jones was dominant for longer. But yeah, but Tyson went to jail. That's why yeah, he fucking... Yeah. He Fred, lost there's, of his boxing. There's no Dude, way Jones... Jones was killing food, No, no. I, look, listen. Jones Jr. used to go play... <laughs> he used to go... Yo, he used to go play basketball and then go do the fight. Like, he yeah. was in top shape. Amazing guy. Yo, amazing no. fighter. Tyson but fights used to last for nothing. 90 seconds. Yeah. Fam, my mom said, yo, this is the longest Tyson fight I've ever, like the longest of a Tyson fight I've ever seen. It I'll say this. Yeah. I think Roy Jones was the better athlete. Oh, yeah. Tyson uh, was the, probably the better fighter. His better footwork fighter. And his, yeah. and his footwork was, yeah, like, I feel like Roy Jones relied on his athleticism. But he was knocking dudes out with body shots. He was doing all kinds of crazy oh, shit. Oh, no, he used to do some, like, wild, not look yeah. shit. But like, he was on. Tyson, boxing-wise, fighting-wise, there's no comparison. As far as like intimidating Tyson, if you look at the right. videos from Tyson in the '80s, man, nobody. I don't even think Muhammad Ali could be Tyson. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if that you see though, was... if you see the videos now of him in his '50s training, it shit is scary. That shit it's is scary. scary to watch. True, yeah. yeah. Like, even like the cut man and the people, the dude on the other side of that little pad looks scared. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you catch him <laughs> right by accident, you're Yo, out. Tyson is really a testament to how fucking rough and tough Brownsville, Brooklyn was. Right, I mean, you got to admit that too, because yeah. Tyson was really a product of his environment at the time. Yep. Yeah, and he even talks about he he fought, started fighting because he was getting bullied all the time. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and he's a small, he's a smaller guy. He's a, he's like five ten. Didn't he's he become? He became like a stick up kid, right? 
He was just yeah. robbing yeah, he, motherfuckers. He, he used to rob yeah. people. That's crazy. And it all started because some bullies like like uh killed his pigeons. And custom yeah. custom model saved his life, right? <laughs> he took him in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, this I, was what fucked up after custom model died. That's when Tyson it just, got crazy. Yeah, that's when it, it's it. it, it's almost like when Kanye when his mom passed. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's exactly just like right yo there. that 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 person that was his rock and that was really keeping him centered. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you think about it though, everyone was out to get Tyson at that point. Oh, yeah. oh After that, yeah. Don King, Robin Givens, Robin everybody. Givens. Like there wasn't one person that wasn't trying to get money from Tyson. That whole that whole rape trial, like yeah. all that shit, man. That, that shit was, was wild. crazy. Yep. To, to Jamie's point too, like Tyson's like legit, maybe five ten. Yeah, and he was knocking motherfuckers out that was like six six. Yeah, he's a small dude. Six five, six six. Is he that massive, short? dudes? Yeah, yeah, he's not that tall. So for him to be knocking yeah. out dudes like he's five, he's he, yeah, yeah, he's around our height. But yo, there, there's no superstars he's just anymore. Muscle. There's no superstars like that anymore. Like Lennox Lewis was kind of a boring fighter, but he won. Oh no, no, yeah. right? Like no, there's no Evander Holyfield. There's yeah. no Lennox Lewis. No, no Sugar Ray Leonard. No yeah. No, there's nothing like that no more, bro. You only have like Canelo and a few other up and coming you, guys. You don't even like, have like a Klitschko. Superstars. You don't even have like a yeah. Klitschko. Well, you don't have none he's still of kind of fighting. Hector Camacho. <laughs> Hector Camacho. Hector Camacho. Yeah. Yo, Camacho is oh man, he's great. <laughs> Maybe like a Deontay Wilder, but it depends on how he comes back well, to. Yeah, Deontay Wilder's fall is crazy, but yeah. um, now as far as it was stacked in the '90s of fighters, there's nothing compared yeah. to that. So I I was, I, we were talking about this on our Twitch the other day. So I'm wondering, is did boxing go down because MMA went up? Because the, possibly because there were more stars emerging from MMA, and then there was less from the boxing, right? No, it's it, boxing fights are hit or miss. Like it could be a boring ass Floyd Mayweather fight. Right. Or it cannot be a football. I'm about fight. to ask y'all, do you think Mayweather kind of destroyed boxing? Up. No, yeah. he was he you know he was a master at, at boxing, bro. I think he like, kept the sport going. He but kept he that shit alive. Yeah. He went out though. It, it doesn't matter. He was great at boxing, not a knocking out. He was a, not a knockout yeah. artist. He was a great boxer. He but, wasn't like an entertainer, like but he was a technician. He was a, a master. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, that's what I'm crazy. saying. Is, don't you think that art is not appreciated anymore? Like oh no, no one wants, an entertainer. No one wants to see that technician side. Like yeah, no one wants to see like Oscar De La Hoya was like a real technician too as well. But yeah. boring fucking fights as he started getting older. He didn't want to get hit. He was like, you know what? He didn't want to brawl out. So that's why the boxing, the sport of boxing kind of went down because no one was brawling. Like no one wanted yeah, to get hurt. Yeah. No yeah. knockouts. It was yeah. just they go all the way to the fucking end of the round. The, yeah, and then they try to win by decision and shit. You exactly. Know what I mean? yeah. yeah. Yeah, like the, the fight that made it live a little bit longer was that o the La Oya and uh Floyd Mayweather fight. That was a big fucking fight. Yeah. yeah. And that helped fighters like Manny Pacquiao kind of rise to his fame because De La Oya was on his way out and Pacquiao was coming in. Right. Um, yeah, but I yeah, they're just people would rather see an, a jam pack. Knockout, big fucking explosion of, right. of box uh, of fighting and a UFC opposed to a yeah. like a, a, a boxing match. But, that, but that's why everyone liked Manny Pacquiao because he would he would brawl out for a little bit. Oh, he he yeah. fought like a Mexican, yeah. And like what's and his he name? Wasn't, yeah. I, I like that other dude, Bernard Hopkins. Oh, yeah, he yeah. dude he fought till he was like fifty three. Yeah. yeah, he was amazing. And he he trained like a motherfucker. He was great. But he, he, got he would out. square off. He would go in there. Yeah, and he was. Yeah, I remember yeah. he he. I remember he knocked out De La Hoya with a body shot. Mm. Oh no, he he was a he was really a, he vicious, was, bro. Yeah, she was. Yeah, vicious. what was up with De La Hoya? Why was he so big? Like I remember watching the Trinidad James. Remember it was that because... Trinidad James fight? No, that was oh like, Felix Trinidad. Yeah, Felix, Felix Trinidad. Trinidad. <laughs> Not Trinidad James. <laughs> That's the gold rapper. <laughs> now you yeah. know what it was is because he won he won the gold medal. In uh, ninety two, <laughs> Trinidad. Yeah, he said he, was from, he said it Trinidad. Was, yo, he, he is. He, I, I have it written in my notes to his Trinidad. <laughs> Gold all of my, my turn. <laughs> nah, dude, uh, De La Hoya just had LA, LA on his back, man. He was from East LA. Okay. He went to the ninety two Olympics, won the gold medal. He yeah. was just like the golden boy. And he was like, like a pretty literally. boy, right? He everyone yeah. liked him. He was a pretty boy, and the thing was, his rise to fame was winning that gold medal. And they told him, yo, you cannot, you have to raise the American flag. And he's like, I'm Mexican and I'm American. So he raised both. And that was a big controversy. Mm -hmm. And, and I was the like, banging wife. He didn't he was he was with yeah. uh, Travis Barker's wife at the time. Yeah, he was. He has yeah. a kid with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. she's bad. Yeah. She's a playboy, mate. Yeah. Yeah, she was bomb as fuck. He just had it all working for him. He was good looking. He, he was, was Mexican. LA. Yeah. Yeah, he was a homegrown kid. Yeah, like, yeah, like he paid for a few hospitals out here, so he had like a big fan base out here. I now, will say this: fighting wise, he was good. 
he wasn't the best, but he mm-hmm. was good. But he lost that Trinidad fight too, and that yeah, was that was controversial. That was controversial as hell. The Felix yeah, but, Trinidad, I, you know, he won it, didn't he? No, he lost against oh, Trinidad. He, he lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a big because like, he was center. dancing too much. He was like off to the side. He wasn't like. Square. He, he wasn't he brawling. Yeah, he he was thought he had away. one. He thought His he had career one. was winding down at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. It was. I don't think so. That was like late nineties. I feel like he also went up in a weight class, so he was being more careful not to get hurt. Right? That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did go up a, a few weight classes. Yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, he was just. He just had it made. It's like the new kid, uh, Ryan Garcia. He's an up and coming boxer, pretty boy, big on social media. And he's just out here impregnating women and running around, <laughs> and people love him. <laughs> it's I'm telling crazy. you, I'm t- they they could get boxing back if they they mix up kind of the shit show of having like YouTubers or like yeah. social media influencers fight and square. Off. That's what I, that's what I think the MMA does really really well. They promote they promote characters. Yeah, they promote like personalities. Yeah, through social media, through their reality show. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Through what was it, Ultimate Fighter, Jamie? Uh, yeah, the Ultimate yeah. Fighter. Like they promote all that shit that you get to know, like the people, and then you become a little more personal. Like, yeah. and, and yeah, then I think almost, boxing it, needs to do that. It's almost like pro wrestling, right? It becomes uh, like a, a little bit more strict, but yeah, along that side, like I know, uh, I mean, along I, yeah. those lines, like um, like Kimbo Slice. Like remember, he was a big internet fighter, right? right, and right. And then he got into the UFC, and then he got his ass kicked a few times. It doesn't quite translate because some of this fighting does take some time, but they're more free about who goes and fights. Like Brock Lesnar, he was a big fucking – he was a football player, then he was a wrestler, and then he became UFC, and he was a big thing for UFC for a long time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's easier for UFC. But You know what boxing needs? They need a Don King. <laughs> yeah, they do need, like, a promoter like that. A promoter like that, yeah. Like, you know yeah. what, man? If they bring in Snoop Dogg to help with some of that shit, yo, Snoop Dogg would be perfect. I think it would be like, good. Yeah, he was good. He was so good, bro. Like it was really, really good. Like he did the performance. <laughs> he was good, and then his commentating was a one. And I'm gonna send you guys a video. He's done a few commentating shit for sports. Yeah, and it's so gold. It's wow. like gold. It's it's amazing. Yeah, he's done a few like little like little impromptu Laker stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sounds good. Like he knows sports. You can tell like that motherfucker really. Nah, he, like, he really does. And he, Yo, yeah. he's done UFC too. He did UFC too. And he speaks like respectful and he, he does like the little like kind of PC <laughs> shit sometimes and then he goes off the off the rails at yeah, other times. I, he was like shit. The question <laughs> the question is is uh, if it's uh HBO Sports, ESPN, or Showtime boxing, if they're gonna let it become like this this crazy kind of shit show. Do you know, like a yeah. variety show boxing exhibition, mm-hmm. well, if they're going to the, take it there? Because if they don't, a, if they keep with that traditional way, I feel like it's going to get played out or it's just not. Is anybody watching like Showtime boxing? Uh, right now it's The Zone. The Zone is the yeah. main, one of the main ones. It's a comp- the biggest competitor for Showtime. Yeah. But they are, they are doing like all that shit. They're letting that shit Showtime's fly. the only one keeping the boxing sport alive, huh? Yeah, yeah. They, HBO, they, they, they're out. They're not doing no more boxing. Wow. Ever. Yeah, so it's all we, like you said, it's the zone ago. and then ESPN plus. Um yeah. and then and Fox it, does fights, like but it's, but it's all mostly like, showtime. Showtime, yeah. ESPN, and the zone. Do you think they're gonna do this? They're gonna incorporate this kind of craziness into it, or they're not the zone already it? did. The zone already did. They did. The zone did the first two Jake the first Jake Paul fight and his brother's fights. Oh wow. Okay. So they're, they're yeah. giving fight into the hype. Logan Logan Paul has fight twice. Oh, yeah, Logan, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He's fought twice. Both of them and are then, fighting? Both of them? Bro, they do anything to get attention. They do anything. They're rapping. <laughs> they're fighting. They're, they're fucking getting cracked down by the cops for drugs at their house. It's crazy. I think I think their motivation for fighting is very different, though. It's literally f- for validation. For clout. Yeah. For clout. <laughs> it's more like, okay, you are real, basically. Because It a might lot be for clout, but them. shit, they, they clearly taking it serious. Because yeah, the dude knew around. what he was doing in the ring. Like, yeah. They're yeah, big trolls, though. They're big trolls. Yeah. That Jake Paul is the guy that got caught uh, for giving... He got a lot of backlash because he was at that suicide forest. I don't know if you guys recall that. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. He re- he, he he recorded a dead body on, on, he, on he, a, a suicide su- forest. Suicide forest in Japan, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So he, he's got caught. They that all was, kind of... Both of them have got some bullshit on them, but... That was crazy yeah, that, disrespectful. That was, that was out, of, out of line. Insane. Yeah. Insane. That was nuts. Um, if we want to go and move forward on further disrespect, do you do you guys know who Megan Wright is? I do. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. a I, I, she, I don't know. She's a DJ, right, in New York. She's a Hot ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, she's a Hot ninety seven DJ. Okay, she had a good song about two years ago. 
two to three years ago with uh, Tory Lanez. Okay, so like I don't know the recent she's had recent backlash because she released a song called Culture featuring okay. Will I Am and ASAP Ferg, and okay. she released that shit on Twitter or like she she released I don't know she tweeted her new song and shit. Mm-hmm. And yo, let me tell you something: the budget for this fucking music video and the song looks crazy, like it's nuts. But yeah, she, very yeah. She got a lot of backlash because. They ba- like I think Will I Am produced it, and he basically stole the whole beat from <laughs> from the South African DJ Lag, and the song was Ice Drop. Yeah, I've heard that song too. Hold on. So wait, I wanted to play this culture song, right? That Megan Wright made, and that, like if I try to find these tweets now, like it's gone. Like yo, and the, the whole song was about cultural appropriation. And they fucking appropriated like, like this, this fucking whole track from the South African DJ, yo. I want to add to that, Cricket. They put the culture vulture uh, definition in the beginning of that fucking video. They did. They did. It's fucking nuts, yo. Hold on. Let me play this shit. Yo. That's her scratching, by the way. <laughs> no I way. Was I, I thought that was, was you. <laughs> By the way, the song sounds awful. I got the gliss, go up in the mouth. Ooh, kind of dick, put it all up in the mouth. Ebony skin, panther on the couch. Blue nose of the thing, we still balling out. The hate on our skin, why you wanna pout? My culture hot dog, yeah, just a sour crowd. Look at him like rock with one eyebrow. Moving culture since I was little Daryl. Culture, they hate our melanin and culture. We rush your sports and culture. First of all, where the fuck are you gonna listen to this song? Like, seriously, when you're getting chased by somebody? This doesn't sound like... Or something you play, you play in the club. That. Like you can't play it in the radio. Yeah, where would you play, play that? Let me let me play the original that uh that uh what's his name sample that shit from. I was gonna say there's no other song there's no other song you could play that song with unless you're playing that DJ Lag song. <laughs> that, that, you can come up with something there. It's the same same was it, was it Lax, is the lag song bigger? I mean, is it a big hit over half a million uh, views on YouTube? Half a million. Why well, he didn't shake like instrumental? Played it. It's just like a beat, though. Anyway, we could just we could tell how he ripped that whole shit from. DJ Lag from South Africa, right? So what he thought that nobody was gonna find out in, the, in South Africa. No, South, that he, South Africa went w- buck wild, like they went Yo. fucking nuts to the point where this motherfucker Will I Am had to make an apology. Hold on. Oh, What's was up, the everybody? Comments, the comments is here to clear up the situation between the song "Culture" and "Drop Ice" by DJ Lag. Yeah. But first, I want to take the time to apologize to Megan Wright from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Megan, I am truly sorry. For putting you in this situation. Yo, she got all the heat. He didn't get nothing. Like yeah, people were much. ripping her apart. Like, how dare you appropriate? How how dare you take from the culture of South Africa and not give out uh, credits? And I want DJ everyone Lack. to know that Megan doesn't deserve the hate you're throwing at her because Megan didn't do anything wrong. The person that's at fault is myself. When the song was turned in, I turned in the credit information to Megan. And I obviously got the credit information wrong. (laughs) And when I realized I made a mistake, I tried to fix it. And at that point in time, it was already too late. So to that, I apologize to DJ Lag. DJ Lag, you're an awesome producer. You have an amazing future ahead of you. And I'm so sorry for getting the information wrong. Meanwhile, he deleted this video. This was on his Instagram. Uh, and then like a lot of the tweets are gone a lot of evidence that this whole shit that happened is gone yeah but it's this, hilarious this happened around thanksgiving and the whole time i was thinking will i am and megan wright must be having the worst thanksgiving ever it dropped on thanksgiving night yeah they must be having oh. the worst thanksgiving weekend ever why were they going so hard at her because they, they took a they took the whole beat and then they because, made the- because an american took a beat from a known um, South African artist and song. So they assume that she produced it, maybe because she's the DJ in the well, video. she's the face of it, right? So yeah. yeah, she was trusting the producer to, you know, give credit and do this right, especially when the song is about culture vultures. 
That's fucking nuts. Damn, oh, man. And is she Latin? What is she? What's her background? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure either, man. I don't know. Man, this whole shit gets like real ugly nowadays, man. Like it's this it's like you gotta be really careful. And like Black Eyed Peas just dropped an album that was appropriating like Latin music. Like they literally <laughs> got away yeah. with that. Right? They really got did. away with it amazingly. Yeah. And it was called Translation. Like the, <laughs> the name of the right. album that they dropped was Translation, right? Yeah. So they got away with literally making a whole album of reggaeton shit, right? And getting that's, that's reggaeton wild. and getting reggaeton artists. And I feel like I don't know, man. Will I am was just like feeling themselves. But they're kind of known for that. <laughs> they, they've always been known for like stealing shit, man. I don't know. If so it's, I, can I, they start I, off as a hip hop group? Yeah. Then I don't know where they started doing EDM. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like I feel like pr- pr- producers and a lot of artists and a lot of everybody a lot of entertainers from back in the day from the 2000s and 90s and beyond Mm -hmm. i feel like it was just them being trendy and now there's no such thing as being trendy right you can't follow you can't just hop on a trend of music or songs or a trend of whatever you get called out right away called out right away now like you like madonna can't just make a reggaeton song out of nowhere you know what i mean whereas back in the day she could have you know, and everybody was making reggaeton in the early two thousands. Everybody did. Shit, R. <laughs> Kelly had a track. Hey, that was a, not for nothing. But that was a good song. <laughs> what are, what are you I'm talking sorry. about? Throwing a Noriega <laughs> had a big yeah. fucking. Noriega <laughs> had a whole album. Well, let's yeah, be, let's yeah. give Noriega props because he did kind of introduce reggaeton to hip hop, though. He did. Yeah, yeah. he Definitely. crossed that bitch over, bro. R. Kelly like didn't. Himself. R. Kelly didn't bring reggaeton to R. Yeah, but he no, just no, hopped on the way. Wait, what? No, Noriega went from Super Thug <laughs> to. Yeah, me, but was it oh, me Cante? <laughs> Oye, Oye, me canto. Oye, me canto. <laughs> Noriega's he's Latin, though, right? He's Puerto Rican. Yeah, yeah. he is. He's half so black. So he gets a pass. He's half, half black, black and Puerto Rican. Half Puerto Rican. Yeah. 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 No, he's no. Great. But what do you call it? What were you talking? What was the R. Kelly reggaeton song? Thong the thong? No. No, it was on. Fu- I'm on fire. Something on fire. Oh no, no, no! The shit burning up. Burning on fire. Burning yeah. Up. <laughs> I forget the name. Yeah. Uh, me as oh man, we sing got- Yandel. We be burn. We burn. Not we be burning. Sorry, it's oh, burn wow. it up. Because I was, yes, I was yes. thinking the snake. The snake one was more like dance hall vibes, right? Yes. Yeah. It was a movie about you like a snake, man. Wow. Yeah. Not the thong a thong a thong a song. He had some phases. He was doing some reggae shit. He was doing some Latin shit. Yeah, he was doing all of it during that fucking trial of that video. <laughs> he was just yeah, getting man. it off, bro. Right. <laughs> fucking R. Kelly. So with this Megan Wright shit, I mean, the song is is awful, right? I don't want to be disrespectful, but. It's not There's, playable. I don't anywhere. think it's gonna see the day the day of light anymore. Yeah, like, yeah, does yeah, she need no. to come out? Does she need to come out and apologize, or is she is she supposed to just stay quiet? Like, I think she think? just stay quiet. I think she's gonna Late, have to release low. a statement <laughs> till that shit blows over. But she on hot ninety seven. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, she's on hot from ten to three. So she's on for five hours. What is the what is the tactic nowadays if you're canceled? You know what I'm saying? Just lay low, lay yeah. low. I didn't come. I mean, back. yo, look at Tory Lanez, bro. Motherfucker laid low and he's still making music and people are supporting him. But he still had to address it. But yeah, he still but addressed it after after a few months. Yeah, you have to lay low for a minute. So maybe she got to address it eventually, but not right away. Yeah, because I was thinking about this like a couple weeks ago when we had Joe Maz on and then DJ Twitter tried to cancel us and shit. Oh, that mm-hmm. was incredible. So I was like wondering, should we lay low? <laughs> <laughs> should we just stop this shit? Stop the, stop the show. <laughs> stop the show because... Come back in March. Them. We'll just, we, we will just return yeah. back later. <laughs> All the hate kind of fizzled out, and we were okay. Yeah, maybe this Joe Mass shit will blow over. You know, yeah. it did. It did. Joe Mass <laughs> blew over. It was it funny. Went from getting canceled to like, oh shit, that was not a bad episode. Like, yeah, I'm glad y'all had him on. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, like, I've I've never talked. I've never spoken to anyone like Joe Mas. You know what I'm saying? Where <laughs> they were just so really just ingrained in there, like. In their conspiracy theorist ideas. You know? It was more so like he was just stuck and he was being hard headed and stubborn about nothing else makes sense, but this makes sense. It's re- but nonetheless, Joe Mass has tweeted since then, fellas. And he said, All right, enough of this COVID and political talk, back to the music. I so I think I think we did the work we, of Jesus. We changed him. We like I, mine. I think he got it out of his system. He got it out of his system. Are you crazy? Are you nuts? He has not got it out of his system. <laughs> He's still tweeting that shit out. Are you nuts? No, no he's, still he's still tweeting yeah. that the election is is rigged. He's, he's rigged. still yes. 
He gonna probably do that until about January. My whole I like he kept insisting. Oh yeah, Trump is gonna win. Trump yeah. is not going nowhere. My my okay. whole thing is just like I don't understand why motherfuckers are bothered by that. It's like he's the most harmless. Like no disrespect, he's just harmless to me. He's he's, just, a, yeah. he's not he's not like a evil person with he's not a Nazi. Steak. Yeah, he's not gonna kill you. Yeah, like when he, he was saying, I was like, "Come on, man! Like that's these guys don't know what the fuck they're talking about." What's what? new? What's new? <laughs> Stick to music and DJing, okay? DJing. So we'll do that. <laughs> have you guys? Seen, have you guys seen the new Cassidy <laughs> pass the mic? The oh, that was happened? great! By the way, that was great. Yeah, I saw that. That was dope. Cassidy killed it again, man. Brought that '80s R&B back. Yeah, that was, that was a good. That was a good one. Can I just say how good all of these artists look? Like they look good. We know who you're talking about. Yo, Shannon look good. Shannon look good. <laughs> Shannon look good. Mwah. Shannon I don't know about that at Alpha wig she was wearing, man. Wow, hey, why are you hate it? She look good, though. <laughs> We're talking about her skin. And Jody Watley look good, man. Jody Watley look good. Shaka Khan Shaka still Khan look good. great. Yeah. All of these motherfuckers still look good. You think they still got groupies when they perform and shit? Probably. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. God damn. You know who, who I didn't even recognize was George Clinton. No, yeah. Jessica looks different, way different. He look weird. He, he took that the... all that look... when he shit out his hair. That's why. And yeah. A little chubbier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he definitely uh he definitely changed. Some that might know. be my fa- that might be my favorite one from Cassidy, by the way. No, this you one. know who looked fat, kind of fat? Um Larry Blackman <laughs> from um Cameo. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> this fucking guy. You Yo, never why fat. you shit on these people? These are like I ain't shitting. <laughs> He looked kind of big, man. He did, but you didn't say that. I remember back in the days, he was the man with the fucking the flat top. I'm like, ow. Leather pants. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Never. You're supposed to be like, he looking rough. Now he looking fat, bro. It's fucking. Uh, yo, were y'all jealous of uh, El DeBarge's uh, thick ass hairline? Did you see his hairline? I would have paid for that baby, bro. <laughs> you saw that hairline that uh, El DeBarge had? Yeah, he, he he looked crispy, bro. That shit put a lot of fucking twenty year olds to shame, man. Uh, you know, yeah. seeing, seeing stuff like that makes me want to go back to the lab. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? When I see shit like that, I'm like, damn, man. Him and Deion start, Sanders start googling, you, huh? start googling hairline treatments and shit. D, you, up, you, but he's half white, so he have that good. Yeah. He ain't have to put no shit in his hair, man. <laughs> hit a hit a Funk Master Flex. He he probably has to connect with all that shit. Oh, Funk Master Flex was getting lipo, right? Oh, was he? Yeah. Yo, I saw. I watched the video. That you shit guys was sent crazy. Me the, you sent me the video, right? Yeah. It's oh funny. God. Right after you sent it, I was. I just saw it. I'm about to send it to you, and you sent it. Fuck man. What that is shit that? just. I, I know it's completely it safe. I think it's safe, but that the way they do that shit, bro. The way they just like jabbing into you with that yeah, little that's... that little vacuum shit. And then you see that, that shit, shit coming crazy. out. Crazy. Kind of yeah. coming out your fucking body. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, bro. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That shit looks scary, bro. But yo, why why would he do that? Why would he advertise it? Because he's obviously gonna get he's gonna get like a free surgery because of it because he put it probably, on. His yeah, yeah, he's probably working with them. Yeah, yeah. he's probably working. That's a, that's a brand deal, baby. Yo, do you know, yeah. do y'all know any motherfuckers who actually got work done? I, 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 I do. I want to know that. You do. I do. I, I know do a few too. people. Really? In Most our cir- in our circle? No, 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 no. Not <laughs> a DJ circle like that. Uh, a lady I used to work with uh, in radio. She got uh, like lipo, like tummy tuck. And it was through uh, through a company that they were pretty much having her do the do the surgery in exchange for um, like airtime commercials and shit. But she was yeah. promoting it. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I was just like, "Why'd you even do it? Like, you look exactly the same to me. Like, shit's crazy." Mm. But if she was scarred up for like months, bro. Like the little scar tissue and all that shit you get. Like yeah, she yeah. couldn't sit down. Like this shit was weird. Damn. No, but have you uh-huh. know? Do you know any fellas that are doing it? Like, is is this starting to get normalized? Like men doing like. You know? Oh yeah, liposuction. Yeah, that's been a thing. Really? Well, what's the what's and the other one that uh what's the other shit that does the, 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 the gastro the, fat, the, the, f- the gastric bypass shit? Oh, but that's the operation. AM did yeah. that back in the day. But that a big boy did that too. Uh, the thing is the 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 freezing the fat thing. That's the the new thing for the wait. What, what is that? What is you that? freeze the fat and it just it, it kind of trims down your fat so you get skinnier, but then it comes back. With t- due time, but they freeze the fat, so it, it kind of condenses your fat. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're not explaining this right. Are Do you, you lose weight or you just stay? No, the- you just go and they freeze your fat, and then the fat can like it condenses. So basically, it's like those plastic bags when you want to store shit, and then you put basically. it in the vacuum. <laughs> oh, the vacuum seal. Yeah, <laughs> vacuum seals, and it shrinks it. And yes, but it comes back. It comes. I've heard, heard of that. Yeah, but I don't know it, much about it. 
Well, yeah, it comes back. But that's the thing in LA. That was the thing in LA for like the last five years. But definitely Drake got that shit, right? Because his abs Supposedly look Drake and French Montana have gotten that. I believe that shit. I believe that. That shit. freezing shit? No. Yeah, I, believe, I believe they got liposuction. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Miami supposedly did that shit. I believe that shit. I've seen like, what about like when motherfuckers get like peck or calf implants and shit? They get yeah, that's like crazy. chest implants. That's too much. Just go work out. Jesus Christ. Oh, calf implants are crazy. <laughs> huh? The calf shit is crazy. I'm going there. No, no, that's it. All that shit is too much, man. But don't would you, you guys ever? Would you guys ever get anything done? Come on, insecurity time. <laughs> no, man. Only thing I've ever considered is the hairline shit. Me bro. too. The hairline's part of the it yeah. factor for me. Is that acceptable for men? I mean, like, is that like sure. widely acceptable now, or is it kind of like, like kind of weird? Acceptable, but they now haven't human. they haven't really figured it out. It's they not, haven't perfected. Yeah. It hasn't been perfected. So if you do it now, you might be like five years from now, you might be like, damn, I should have waited. I don't know the, Tory Lanez. The shit they Tory, did. Tory right Lanez hairlines are kind of dope right now, man. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Tiger yeah. shit is strong too. Deion he got braids. Is yeah. the fucking one. But you know who else got it? That's crazy. My boy was telling me. Well, actually, Stone Rock told me. Um, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, oh, oh wow. yeah, he got some locks. Yeah. He got some locks. His shit look great, like wow. immaculate. And then we all we all talk about the dude that was on uh fucking uh what's the show that we, we always talk about that dude Entourage. Entourage. Oh, um, yeah. join me, Piven. Yes, yes, yeah. him. Oh, Ari, Ari, go. Ari, yeah. He was crazy. like not. We were talking about how he like was not getting roles because he was going. Yeah, bald. he was like the chubby. He always played the chubby <laughs> friend, the chubby ball headed friend. The side, yeah, yeah. He, he was when Entourage him. came out. He became like a fucking leading he, man. He, he, he lost all that weight. He had hair. It's like yo, what? How that happen? Yeah, man. But he That's never crazy. became a leading man for some reason. Uh, they nah. tried. They tried after Entourage. They tried after Entourage. He almost, but it didn't. It never happened. I wonder what, what that, happened. I wonder what, what that, happened. That, what that toy uh, show that they had, the first toy store in England or some shit like that. He was playing the lead role in that, but it didn't work out. And then he caught allegations, and we haven't that heard from rap. him since then. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Me too. Me too. Got to him. Oh shit! Damn, that's crazy. Know that. Yo, he had a, he he was the gay guy on Rush Hour Two, the one that was the 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 designer. Yeah, yeah. That was one of my favorite roles. It was that was like doing the um Antivar Gs though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the mochaccino face. <laughs> He was still like a, he was still a, a sidekick dude. He was like the principal at fucking uh, old school. Like that was, was before yeah. Entourage. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? <laughs> yeah, he, he was, was like, the principal. That was like, slightly year. before. Yeah, that before. was that was when he was that was when he was balding, right? When he was a principal in old school. But he had been bald by then. Yeah, yeah, he was like hella thin. <laughs> the cheese is this, <laughs> <laughs> is that what you, you the work that y'all too would get done? Y'all would get hairlines and shit. What yeah, are you every, getting done, Crook? Huh? I would get headline. What, are, what yeah. are you getting done, Kirk? I I fixed my teeth. You going for the, the venaries? I don't know. That's that, I feel like that's normal. My that is normal. Teeth? I mean, no, <laughs> get your teeth. Fixed. No, getting your teeth fixed is normal. It's like oh. no big deal. You know yeah. what I, I would do? I would maybe uh make, get a more prominent chin. I feel like okay. I got I got one of those like glass like those chins that like. So you uh, get like you get like a little sculpt. I just want like a chin. Like, I feel like I don't no have shape? a chin with a, 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 with a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> or a, a cliff chin. <laughs> little button chin. You want a little button chin? Yeah, because I have you know, like a, you know that they can do that right? surgery. They can do that surgery to where they they uh tighten up the skin, like they and take they like shave, some skin they they sh- your... and they shave the uh the, the bone down and make it look a little more pointy. Yeah, give you like you that jawline. Handsome, bro. Give you that jawline. Yeah, looking like Jay Leno. Yeah. <laughs> you know what killed me though? The, the only thing that would kill me is that I'd be talking to y'all and y'all just be looking at the work that I got done. And you wouldn't even be listening. Like, if to it's what not I said. noticeable, you're straight. If it's not noticeable, you'll be okay. Because I feel be, like we'll, if I, we'll have like a I meeting, like just... <laughs> we have like a meeting or something, and I'll be talking to you. Everyone will just be looking at like my new chin, like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what's funny is I, I've thought about that. I'm like, I wonder if I would be just be at a bar talking to somebody and all they're looking at is my hairline. Yeah, I would like, be. All of a sudden, yeah, I just I showed up be. with a hairline. One hundred percent. Yeah, they'll be like. And you know, D, and D wouldn't be like normal. He'd be trying different, different hairstyles every month and shit. Yeah, a different I'd wearing, flat top, I'd wearing, different shit. I'd be S- wearing wave caps, a little curls, S curls. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be doing Gumby. He looked like he looked like Keith, he looked like Keith Washington. He looked like Keith Washington <laughs> one week. <laughs> I like a, I like a Nino, a Nino Brown one week. Oh, flat man. top, cheese. I'd definitely crap. be wearing wave caps for no reason. Yo, D, if you could, if you could, if there was a surgery to make you taller. Would you do that? 
Nah. Some lifts. I, I, no lifts? I'm telling you, you that. I'm cool. I'm cool with my height, everything you else. You are? Yeah. Like, I'll be like, fine. Like, what, like six inches taller. Six inches taller. You wouldn't want that? Oh, nah. You'd be six two. Nah, I, I'm fine. I'm telling you. The only if I was still playing sports, maybe, yeah, maybe. But now it's just like it's you're never you're, it's you're never stopped me from right? doing anything. Yeah, That's I'm like good. five six. That's good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't matter to me. Nah. The hairline. If I could, if I could be wavy again. If I could be wavy again. <laughs> if I could be wavy with a beard, I'd be killing. Woo! It. Oh man. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> wavy with a curt with. The- with a beard. Um, so Jesus wait, Christ. should we talk about the Grammys? Because uh, never was upset about the Grammys, right? Oh yeah, it's just yeah. yeah I mean, it's just whack, man. Why do you guys? Like why all, do you? Guys, why do you guys? Like, what season this year is gonna be bad, man? Why do you guys care about the Grammys though? Like, I don't care. Like, does I it, don't know. I grew up in a household that was a big thing. I don't want to say that. Like, growing up, the Grammys. Used Not to in the Oscars. What did they get wrong? I want to know what they get wrong. All right, so let's best new artists. Ingrid Address, I don't know who that is. Phoebe Bridgers. Chica, I follow on Instagram. She's a dope rapper, singer. Um, Noah Cyrus, uh, who's that? Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus, little sister. Okay. D Smoke, yeah. that's the guy who won that, what is it? Hustle and Flow? Rhythm and Flow. That <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> the, <laughs> called out here for a pimp. <laughs> that's the um that Netflix <laughs> con- Contest, Show. right? The hip hop, yeah, contest. with uh, with Cardi B, Cardi B, and TI, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Doja Cat, would... Do- Doja Cat's best new artist, K Trinata, makes no sense, but he's there, and then Meg the Stallion. Okay, is it okay? We've been up on K Trinata for a minute, yeah, he's been around for like 10 years, man. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think the world is no, they didn't know who he was, the yeah. DJ community knew who he was, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I don't know if he's allowed to be there, but no, sure. he is. He is like they can call him a best new artist because but he's been around forever. Same thing with Lizzo, though. Like Lizzo's been around for yeah. a long fucking time. You know, Yo, um, Jody Wiley won best new artist, and she was with Shalom like ten years before she became a yeah. solo artist. So I could see Doja Cat winning that. Really? I was gonna say Doja, Doja might yeah. win that or Meg. Yeah, I think Doja Cat. I feel like Probably one of these have, might win it, like a Phoebe Bridges. I don't even know who that is, but I feel like she'll win it. I would no. love to see D Smoke win it. Yeah, me too. But he's not. That would be that. amazing. He's from Inglewood. He's from my hometown. Like I would love that. But so here's the problem: anytime you have anything like this with like other white artists and black artists, they're always going to think that the Grammys are going to pick the white artists. The white right? artists. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then, the, when the Grammys pick the black artists, we're like, it, oh, they it, felt bad for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is, it, is it just assumed that they got yeah, it? It's like, no one's ever going to say the Grammys get it right, right? No one's going to say that. But the big deal is the um, the weekend. He didn't get any nominations. He had That's like the, the worst. The biggest album this year. Yeah. And the biggest singles. That Blinded I'm, Light. Blinded Lights. And Heartless. Is that Heartless. Right? Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, like all the biggest th- songs this year. No, he didn't get one Grammy nomination. And they're saying that was because um he scheduled to do the Super Bowl. And the Grammy committee they pushed him they was like yo you can do the super bowl or do the grammys and he was like i'm doing the super bowl so they that's the reason they're saying he got snow i don't know if that's true or not oh wow and they're one week apart from each other so first weekend that's be why the grammys, and then the super bowl is the next exactly, week exactly yeah i mean that makes oh, sense like that makes sense did, yeah so it might take away from each other uh never did you hear that album did anybody hear that yeah uh, yeah when the first I, time i, was, I listened to it yeah Okay, people are claiming that it's the thriller of his career. I don't know if that's... It might be one of his best albums. I wouldn't compare it to Thriller, but it's definitely his best... uh, I mean, his best work. You thought it was better than his his last one, though? Really? A lot of people feel that way. Really? Starboy was a good one. Starboy is a good one. I prefer Starboy. Like, that album, it was just a little more R&B. This new one is, like, a little bit more... Mitch commercially mm-hmm. yeah but i like, even like, think the one before that was good too i mean mm-hmm. they were all good yeah like feel it feel it coming was an amazing record yeah, yeah. it was a good record i don't know man all right Let me... I, I could yeah go ahead no no sorry go ahead say what you're gonna say no i'll say yeah doja cat like she's she's white friendly enough and she's pop she yeah, had like huge, a radio of... su- ra- huge radio success yeah i think i could see her winning it I want to know where this D Smoke motherfucker is coming from because he's nominated for a bunch of shit, yo. Yeah. He's, oh, exactly. he's, not, yeah. he's not a bad artist. He just came out of nowhere, bro. 
I actually like him. He's a good rapper and he's a good, like his album is good. Would it be considered in that album category for rap, best rap album? No. All right. So but, like, well, let's go through these things. Best rap song, Bigger Picture by Little Baby. Great song, right? Great good video. Good song. Great, great oh, message. Oh, Rowdy mm-hmm. Rich, The Box. Great. Yeah. Big record. Laugh Now, Cry Later, Drake, Little Dirk. That's good. Rockstar, The Baby, Rowdy Rich. I, can I hate see that, that record. I, it was a big crossover hit, though, right? It is. Yeah. It was. It was a big TikTok record, too. And then Megan Thee Stallion with Beyonce Savage. Like, I mean, that, that, that list is not too bad. That's not it was bad. like all big records, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Who are you guys giving it to? Hmm. I'm going with The Box. The Box. I think it's up between The Box and Little Baby. I feel like Little Baby deserves nah, a Grammy. I, I said it's going to be Savage. No way. Yeah. Just because of Beyonce. Maybe. He may be right, Kirk. I don't think they're gonna give it to Drake after what he did last year with the whole you don't you don't need this you don't need these awards to validate you like oh he did like they, that this year too I feel like they gonna remember that shit and be like yeah we ain't giving you no awards I don't Even know Jay Z got nominated for that this, this is up in the air song. because they could give it to the baby and Rowdy Rich for Rockstar because that was a big song yeah. that was just a big crossover song mm-hmm. um, yeah that had huge radio success also yeah but you never know that. you never know because I think Little Baby's up for I feel like the industry is rooting for little baby, so I feel like he's up for that. Just Grammy because of win. the just because of the message behind it, you think they they push yeah. him a little the bit, a little bit, but also he is he is kind of considered like the best rapper out right now, and he's one of the few rappers that could drop a song like the bigger picture, and mm-hmm. get away with it and have it and actually execute it like really well. Yeah. You know what, man? I'm I'm gonna say Savage. Really, you think that's so? like the only female rapper nominated right there. And plus, you got Beyonce on the song. Mm. I was going to ask you, did, does that make a big difference for you choosing that if it was by yourself, like it was once? Like, No, about to, yeah, exactly, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So you, you would choose it just because Beyonce's on there. I'm saying that's the not me, but the Grammy committee would probably choose that, choose it because of that reason. All okay. Right. So, wait, here we go. Best rap performance. So, what's the difference between rap song and rap performance? Is one is one more dedicated to is the song more about the writing? Yeah, I think it's the delivery and the writing. Exactly. Yeah. That's the, for yeah, the I writing. think best rap song the, writer, the, writer, the writers get the, writer the Grammy, gets right? that right, right. The Grammy, yeah. Performance the, writer, the artist gets the Grammy. And then the best exactly. rap performance is like the performer. For the, the artist. artist. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So best rap performance, uh the bigger picture, little baby, Savage, uh, Megan, Beyonce, Pop Smoke Dior, Jack Harlow was popping, the baby bop. And Deep Reverence, Big Sean, and Nipsey Hussle. I didn't even hear that record with Big Sean it's, and Nipsey Hussle. It's a, it's a oh, good it's record. On, it's on Big Sean's album, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. Damn, uh, that's up for a Grammy? I'm surprised. That album just came out like two months ago. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Jack Harlow on this one. Mm, that would be a big upset, though, wouldn't it? For what? Because it'd be like the Savage? only white boy, the only white boy out of all the nominees winning. I'm going. I'm going with performance. That's what of I'm saying. Song. Everything is so racial now. It's not even like. No, no. You know, no I, would I would say. I would say either Jack Harlow or Pop Smoke. Yeah, I would go with either or. But I think uh, performance wise, what's popping is just a way better sounding record. But he's 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 deceased. I no. mean, I'm not bringing into that. I, I mean, it has nothing to do. I I'm not saying me. I'm just saying. I'm thinking that's what the, how, the, how the committee would see it. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I think they would give it to Pop Smoke. But I think Jack Harlow shit, deserves man. that shit. That that was popping record was everywhere, bro. But what's popping yeah. record was insane. It made everybody. That a was like the big yeah. That was a big song. That was a big record. That shit was on ESPN yeah. before like NBA Finals games. Yeah, like it's radio. A- like, and hey, like, don't get me wrong, I love Pop Smoke, but that Jack Harlow record, like performance wise, the way that song is, it's insane. It's commercially yeah. big. It's commercially sounds better. Okay, so the next one is but be- this is this is the first right best melodic rap performance. They never had yes. this before. This is the first time, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. I never heard about this fucking category ever. All right. Uh, so best melodic rap performance is Rockstar, The Baby, Rowdy Rich, mm-hmm. um, Anderson Pack, Lockdown, Drake and Little Dirk, Laugh Now, Cry Later, The Box, Rowdy Rich. Highest in the room, Travis Scott. I say Rockstar or the box is gonna win. I'm with you song. with Rockstar. I think Rockstar has a better melodic and more sounding, a unique sound yeah. than the other four. And I love Anderson Pack, but he's just not doing it with that record. No, no, no. I feel like if Drake if Drake were to win a Grammy in a category, I think this would be it. Mm-hmm. This is the only one I could see it. 
Because uh, Life, Life Now Cry Later is a huge record. It's super melodic. It's super catchy. Um, the Box probably had a, be- a bigger year. Um, but I know Laugh Now Cry Later is probably like fresh on people's minds. And I feel like the voters, it's like what's fresh on their mind. You know what I mean? I think the rock star is going to win just because it seems like something more gram, like the Grammys Grammy. would accept it more. It's like yeah. borderline country song. You know what it I is. mean? <laughs> I would say I would say rock star as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's going to win. All right. So like, let's, oh, this is the word. This is the shit that I was a little bewildered by, which is best rap album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, but I don't know if it's a good sign or a bad sign of shit that's going on. So the best rap album is like literally all backpack rap. It's all right. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's like all underground rap shit. Underground rap. Yeah. Uh, it's Royce to five nine. Right. He's not really backpack. Yeah. It's Royce to five nine. Jay Electronica's a written testimony. Right. Mm-hmm. Freddie yeah. Gibbs and the Alchemist. I mean, yeah. sh- shout out to the Alchemist. He fucking deserves that. Fuck. He does. Um, and then D Smoke once again from fucking Hustle and Flow, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we've ever named an episode Hustle and Flow, but this might be the name of that episode. D Smoke, D Smoke from uh, what is it? Rhythm and Flow. Yeah. Rhythm and Flow. Rhythm Netflix. and Flow. Bad Habits. So this, this so this dude D Smoke is from L.A., right? He's from Inglewood or something. Inglewood. Right? His yeah. brother's Sir. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the R&B. Yeah, Sir is amazing. Sir. Sure, it's amazing. That's his brother. And this his dude, and this dude, D Smoke, he like raps in Spanish. I saw some of yeah. the Hustle and Flow uh, Netflix show, <laughs> Rhythm and Flow. Yeah, I even Rhythm saw an interview flow. with Snoop where he was, where Snoop, I think, did a uh, Aladdin, Aladdin song, and D, he was, she was praising D Smoke for writing his verses. Yeah, yeah, because he's so like well versed in Spanish. He did. He no actually idea. did a he did a big banda uh, record this shit, uh, Snoop Dogg, and it's still getting played on the radio. Really, which is. That's, yeah, it's it's in Spanish. My mom plays it. It's one of her favorite records. Wow. Yeah, so that dude D Smoke, I don't like I guess he, he deserves I, I don't know. It's so weird. Look, right? listen, for rap album, he deserves it. For the other ones, he uh but this one he deserves it. Now, I think the category is a little bit Wait, I didn't did I mention Nas's King's Disease was also no, you didn't. No, okay. no, no, no. So I would I, love to see that. I but I think uh Roddy Rich should be in this. Hmm. I really do think his album should be in this. I don't is know there... much about uh, Freddie Gibbs. Freddie Gibbs was getting a lot of backlash, supposedly, because he's in Atlantic now, and hmm. supposedly they paid for him to be nominated. But oh, I have no. a question: why? Why would I don't know? Like, isn't it weird that albums like this kind of were nominated, but then all is there the... a difference between a rap cat? Is there a rap category and a hip hop category, or is it just one thing? It's just rap. It's all rap. Like, there's it's no rap. best hip hop album. No, that's I, I, I would, that would make sense. Rap is the hip hop is yeah. Yeah. that is just very weird. Like it's all like, like boom bap sounding like shit, right? Like backpack rap. I mean, is that a good thing? I guess it is a good thing, right? It's I don't different, know. man. That they're recognizing real rap artists. Yeah, well, I shouldn't say real, but I think they're, they're trying to be cool this year. Yeah, because it's kind of like, weird. all right, you guys got the singles. We're gonna like give y'all Grammys for y'all singles, but let's be honest, y'all albums were not. Popping, and mm-hmm. these these are actual rap albums. Well, and they, weird, these rap man. albums aren't focused on pushing singles. And this yeah. is kind of, this is kind of a first to have this this many this many fucking backpack rappers nominated for best rap album. Mm-hmm. Who do you but think, think Nas like, is going to get it? You think he deserves I would it? Nas deserves it. He's never won a Grammy, and yeah, his album's really good, man. Yeah, that's a good album. Yeah, yeah, he definitely does does deserve that shit. Yeah. If any, if like, anyone here, Spicy is actually getting a lot of radio love. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah a lot of radio love and a lot of like uh, commercial love. I see it on commercials, like trailers for movies. And that's not like sports events, like uh, sporting events. We're using that that shit on TV. Like it's getting a lot of love. Yo, surprisingly, uh, how gassed would Jay La- Electronica be if he won this Grammy, yo? Uh, he'd be like, on oh, my first album, my debut album, I got nominated and I won. <laughs> he'd be so G'd up if he won that shit. Like, yeah, take care, but Jay-Z was on half of this I shit. I say that. Dude. A lot of people saying that was a Jay-Z album. <laughs> that was a Jay-Z album featuring Jay Electronica. Yeah. I feel like D-Smoke is like going to be this year's SZA. Like, all the nominations, but not going to not gonna. Yeah, it's, it's, SZA got, SZA it's, got snubbed. It's a good starting point, though, for D-Smoke, right? Mm, it's yeah. a good starting point for him for his gonna bring first recognition album. for him. Yeah, yeah. motivation too. By his second or third album, he's gonna really t- he's gonna really uh really put together his sound and he's gonna have more eyes and ears listening to him and watching him. So I think it's yeah. good. I would love to see the Alchemist win something, a Grammy, you know. Voice to That'd five cool. nine too. I know he's won for like writing and shit, but it, it'd be kind of yeah. dope if Voice won. 
I'm up in the air with a lot of these motherfuckers. I think I like seeing this, even though I've listened to these albums, and I was like, eh, you know, like they're not bad, but I don't know if I'm in a different place. I'm gonna check out D Smoke because I I never even heard of any of his shit. It's not bad, but it's it's one of those things where I feel like all of these albums, like uh, the Ari Lennox album, right? My first listen was like, eh, this is okay, and then mm-hmm. I just started playing it on repeat. It aged well. Yeah, I just started playing it recently on repeat, and I'm like, wow, this album's great. Like, this album's really good. And I feel like I think that's the problem with a lot of albums that are put out. It's like there's so much so much music and so much content that no one really has the time to, like, just really appreciate some of this music and, like, put it on repeat yeah. and have it really live in our, like, in our lives and become a soundtrack in our lives. You know what I'm saying? And because there's so much music going out. Mm-hmm. Um, Anyway, we'll see what happens. When is the Grammys in next year, February or some shit? Late, late January. Yeah. All right, we'll see what happens, man. Uh, uh what about song of the year? Have you guys want to talk about that one or no? Yeah, what is song of the year? Yeah, let's go over that. Fuck it. Uh we have Black Parade by Beyonce, The Box by Body Rich, Cardigan by Taylor Swift, Circles by Post Malone, If the World Uh Was Ending by JP Save and Julia Julia Michaels featuring Julia Michaels, Can't Breathe by uh by her, Every Everything I Wanted by Billie Eilish and Don't Scare Now Dua Lipa. I'm going with Dua Lipa because that record is huge. It's mm. gotta be either Dua Lipa or the Box or Roddy Rich, but Dua Dua Lipa that record is massive. That record is massive, and Post Malone Circles is also big, but that Dua Lipa record yeah, is Lipa, incredibly man. big. All right, so what the fuck is the difference between that. what's the difference between Song of the Year and Record of the Year? Writing, song of the Year goes to the writers of the song. Okay, I think Record of the Year, goes, of the year goes, to goes to the artists. Yeah, that's a hard one, man. Pause. Yeah, I think Dua Lipa. So Record of the Year is almost the same nominees, right? Yeah, no. definitely yeah, the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah. Except those are cat is on that one and. Colors by Black. Uh, Which song by D- uh, Doja Cat? Say so. Say so. Yeah. I think they might give Dua Lipa song of the year, and the record of the year is going to go to Say So because that record was also huge. Yeah. I don't but, know. Mm. It's a hard one. It's it's really whatever the I'm politics gonna, are. I feel like I'm gonna say Post Malone. Mm. Circles. I know that's not a bad record. I like that record too. Mm-hmm. I feel like but it's that, all politics, right? It's like who 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 they can get to, like who's the record label pushing for? Yep. You know who's who's uh, available to like. I'm about to, to say if Beyonce is available to perform. Yeah, he's gonna win. Oh yeah, she ain't showing up without winning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wonder how they're gonna do it though. Like, how they're gonna present these fucking awards? Like, how many people are gonna be in the building? Is it gonna be in LA? It might be in Texas to let a little oh, bit I didn't of people think about inside. That. So that's my main thing. So the AM, did, AMAs was kind of weird. Yeah, did any? I didn't even watch the AMAs, and I didn't watch the Soul Train Awards. I didn't watch it either. I didn't watch the Soul Train, or I saw part of the AMAs, but it was like weird because they just come out out of nowhere. Like they present the winner, they just come out of nowhere. But they may, mainly all the uh, nominees were performing a little bit. These people are doing it all wrong. Like they're doing these these award shows wrong. Like they have to like be spreading it out more on other platforms and not just. Uh, network TV. Yeah. Like, gotta no go one's going to watch that shit. I, it's sad. Go. I didn't even know the Soul Train Awards were on, man. I didn't yeah, even hear same. any kind of advertisements, no no kind of buzz about it. Yeah, but it why, does Soul, why does Soul Train even need an award show? Like, why? It, th- there's just hold on to the, they hold on to the legacy. Yeah, Blacks need no. some type of award show, man. So. <laughs> and they used to be they a need big deal. Like, growing, growing up, I used to love watching the Soul Train Awards. Exactly, man. I used to look forward to it, but now it's just like, what? what is the point? Like, but, but it's marketing for the TV show. Like, But there is no TV show now. So like, what? I don't right. understand the point. But they want to keep that name alive, though. That's why. I don't Who's know. Ho- who hosted it? Tisha Campbell uh, and um, Gina Pam. I thought like they hosted every year. <laughs> Gina and Pam. They've been hosted for like the last 10 years. <laughs> you know, <Pam. laughs> they got to find a better way. They got to find a better way to air this shit. And a better host. They just need to spread it out on more platforms. But I know like, you know, the network they, is putting up all the money. So I don't know. They got to go to YouTube, man. Everybody's got to go to YouTube now. I feel like the only way SNL survives, like Saturday Night Live, the only reason why Saturday Night Live is like relevant now is because their marketing and social media game is so strong. As soon as like that show airs, 
they have like clips ready to go on yeah. social media, and they're on YouTube. Yeah. All 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 their segments are on YouTube as soon yeah. as it ends on TV. I feel like mm-hmm. maybe like the minutes, said, yeah, the Grammys were on top of it. I feel like maybe last year, but the AMAs and Soul Train, I didn't really see anything on social media. Like like you said, Soul Train has no show to pull from mm. to like have any relevance to keep the award show going. Well, Gra- Grammys last year was still like the regular one. The people were still attending stuff like that. This year is different. Who's the, last, who's the last Soul Train host? Was it like a Shamar Moore or something? <laughs> Shamar <laughs> Moore? <laughs> no, wait, wait. Yeah, no, he was like the last. Monique, but she did the <laughs> Monique. Awards. Oh, Monique! Yeah, I remember Monique was the Soul Train Awards uh, host. Yeah. They're probably gonna have Dogface fucking host that shit. That dude's yo, Dogface just got his brand new teeth, bro. Wait, if he hosts the Latin Grammys, I want to. I will watch it. Dogface got his brand new teeth in, bro. Can I tell you something? There is nobody pimping the game harder than that fucking. Dude, dog face. You're gonna dude, say that fucking Mexican. I heard I was you. gonna say that. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> yo, he's killing it, bro. That yo, he got new fucking, team. Fucking he's Mexican. Game? Yo. Well, why he looks like he's like his mid 50s and he's like maybe 35 years old? No, <laughs> see, uh, we don't age yeah. well. Yeah. We do <laughs> no, shut up. Yes, he's yeah. in like his 30s. Really? He's in his mid 30s, like late yeah. 30s. No, he's like about, old. bro. I'm no, he, he, looks like old. he looked like he got grandkids for real. That's what I thought actually, he was... you know what? He may be 40 because this kid, I think she's 20. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I remember he said that he had her at a young age. So I think it Still, made he it... looks old as fuck, man. Like, he looked like a triple OG, bro. I he thought does. He was oh, no, yeah, show. he does. He I looked like he, he, was in... he looked like he could have been extra in colors. Like he could have been in <laughs> yeah. <there>. Like <laughs> blood, he could have blood in, blood out. He was an, Ameri- <laughs> he was an American me. He was one of them motherfuckers. Yo, he's yeah, funny, in the bro. zoot suits. <laughs> I just seen him in. A, I just seen him in a commercial. He was in a fucking uh, Vivint Home Dog. Security commercial with Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Said, Yo, who is, is who is his manager? Can Sujit hire yeah. him? Can yeah. Sujit, can Somebody, hire I don't know who. I don't scam, know who his manager is, bro. Can scam out his hired dog faces bro. agent or manager? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Amazing. That fucking guy is everywhere. He's like, well, he's getting, he's milking this shit. Like his whole. I was looking at his Instagram. And it's nothing but ads. It's like him selling some shit. Like the taco sauce, the, the Mexican market. Yeah. It's crazy. Bro, he was bro. doing the whole, the, that Megan, Megan Thee Stallion body song. Oh, he was doing it good. He was doing he it too good. got that shit, bro. Yeah, doing the little doing dance. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yo, anybody that who's body, doing yadi, 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 yadi. Yeah, the yeah. body, yadi, 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 yadi. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there should be no motherfucking dude doing that dance too well. Yo, he just right got now. engaged. He just got engaged in Vegas. He's he was hanging out in Vegas. He Ooh. had the best twenty dog face. Yeah, he just got engaged. Bro. Besides D Nice, he had the best um <laughs> twenty twenty. <laughs> Yo, wow. No, I'm gonna say this. After Dog Face showed up, the year kind of turned around. I'm gonna put that out there. After he he was on that skateboard and that cranberry juice. The he ain't turned around yet, man. <laughs> no, it turned out. It turned out better. Than it was going. You know but. what I hate? Look, I don't mind that Dogface is having a great year. Oh, where he's like <laughs> capital- fucking hater. He's capitalizing off of the, all of this shit. The only thing that I fucking hate is just like, why do we have to further prove that you can have no talent and make a ton of money? Like, you know what I mean? Like this yeah. dude was on a though. fucking. On a skateboard drinking cranberry juice, and then like now all of these opportunities Singing open up. Mac. Yeah, like I just don't, I just that's the only thing that frustrates me. Now he's a social media influencer, right? And then now these there's, there's like kids and there's like idiots in America, like wow, I could do that, I could be the next person like that. That's yeah. the only thing that I fucking hate, but you know, I salute, like do your thing, dog face, fucking uh, for, for what for whatever reason, like I just a part of me loves the fact that it's him. <laughs> just he seems like a good dude that wasn't trying to be famous and it just happened really he seemed like and a he's fucking, just running with it <laughs> you don't want me to answer right. <laughs> what was you gonna say <laughs> what was you gonna say i don't know he seemed like like the like the number one carjacker in, in la that's what he looked like to me <laughs> you Yo, look like his, you know, he looks like, like a, a former game banger <laughs> yeah he does oh, yeah, he was 100%. definitely is yeah. it looks like it looks like I thought he hung out with Angie V when I first saw him on some dead shit. Yeah, dog face on like his, his that was yeah. his Yo, he, he looked like point. a straight up criminal for real. Like no, he does. <laughs> I, like you know, like all the motherfuckers uh, up and down. Am my I block, being bro? racist? Am I being racist? No, Hell he no. looks like that. He looks like that. You know? Yo, his manager is some girl named uh, Gina Rodriguez, and she's in uh she's executive at uh, at Lifetime TV and We TV. Mm. So, oh wow, that's yeah, like Gina Rodriguez out with a little puppet and all the other game bangers. <laughs> oh, look at me, little puppet. 
<laughs> hey, yo, all I know is this. Something's going to pop out about Dogface, about some dirt he did <laughs> like 10 years ago or five let's years not, ago. Let's not put that out. Let's not put that out. Something's, I mean, someone's going to bring up some shit, some I'm hater ass motherfucker. Let, let Dogface live, man. You know? I mean, yo, I want him to live. I think it's fine. Like, do your shit, man. Yo, that dude yo, is so, so happy, bro. Look at those grimy <laughs> teeth, dude. Look at his teeth. Something's gonna That's happen. That's amazing. Something's gonna happen, and everyone's gonna cancel him. <laughs> Yo, he he made out a trailer park, bro. He lived in a trailer park when he came, he, he did that fucking uh, video. He lived really? in the house now, right? Wait, wait, he, wait, he wait, bought wait. a house now. He lived in the trailer park, and his wife worked at Time what Lifetime? No, oh, his uh, manager, manager worked. Manager. manager worked at, at Lifetime. Oh, okay. I thought he married she, a chick. No, 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 no. His chick's been with him, I think, for some time now. That was his girlfriend. But he bought Damn. the ring with all this fucking promotional money. He's only going up, bro. I'm saying Dog- you, I'm saying you got to like live in a trailer park to make a video of yourself skateboarding on the highway drinking cranberry juice cuz like 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 this is the greatest life I have. Like this is all this is all I wanted all week was to skateboard <laughs> and drink cranberry juice. Like that's 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 when you know of course, he, of course, he lived in a trailer park. Of course, and and he did nothing but like dancing videos, and on on TikTok, like he was already catching a flame. But after that video, fucking skyrocket, bro. On TikTok, I can't believe this shit. Amen. Anyway, man, salute to him. I think we're we're gonna end it here, right? Let's end it here. We should give a rest in peace to uh, Tony Shea, right? From oh, yeah, man, yeah. the owner of Zappos who passed away um, mm-hmm. last week, right? I guess from yeah. a fire. It was a fire in his um, house. He was in Connecticut for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And he was um, at the house he was staying at. He got trapped in the basement. Right. When the fire yeah. started and he did, had a hard time getting out. So like all the um, smoke he inhaled and he got like some burnt. Yeah. So when he sad. made it out, he made it out safe from the fire. Then he died from like a couple of days later. Yeah. yeah. That's so, crazy. So uh, the reason why we're giving him a shout because he was actually really instrumental in like pretty much like renovating and re like like remodeling all of downtown Las Vegas. Which yeah. is the local scene for Las Vegas. Yeah. Like people don't know. Yeah. Big, and big scene. Yeah. Big, yeah. Big. Zappos as a company, uh I think they have a, a office or headquarters downtown yeah. as well. When they move, yeah, they moved yeah. downtown Las Vegas. When yeah. they moved there, it basically changed that whole the, neighborhood. Yeah. Downtown area. Yeah. Yeah. Completely because he was really like the slums like, down there. Like yeah. Old school in Vegas down there. Yeah. 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 It was like the like Fremont Street. It was like Atlantic City. Like when you visit Atlantic City and yeah. outside of Atlantic City, it's fucking hood as shit. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's what downtown Las Vegas used to be. And it's actually like a hipster neighborhood. It's like some, like the beginning of Brooklyn Park Slope type of shit. Like, yeah. That's where it is. It's probably 10 years away from where it, it could be, which is yeah. like some real Brooklyn shit. But yeah, Tony Shea was like really instrumental in that. And yep. um, yeah, man, I mean, he was developing a whole bunch of businesses there. Uh, yeah. I think he opened a, a. Didn't he open a ramen restaurant with five at one point? Was he part of that restaurant? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's he bitsy, Yo, Tony I Shea. It Yo, I want to see if DJ Five did a rest in peace to Tony Shea because Tony Shea is responsible for DJ Five's ramen restaurant that he ramen had, restaurant that he had for like a year or like six months or eight months or some shit. <laughs> Remember, never we went there, we dropped like eight hundred dollars. I didn't know what I was out of town that night. That day, y'all went. Oh yeah, you went there. I'm, and, I went. I went there and I dropped like six hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. What? <laughs> <laughs> you think he was gonna hook you up? I thought five was gonna put some <laughs> discount. And I had no discount. I paid, like, I brought like my whole staff there, and I was like, five was like, uh, like five was like hosting. He was like hopping around the tables, and then like the bill came, and I was like, oh shit, this is crazy. This is- <laughs> That's nuts. No, in, no industry, no industry discount. There's no industry discount. I was like, oh shit, six hundred. I was like, damn. I was like, fuck it, man. I'm supporting this shit. Yeah. But yeah, that was that's Tony Shea. So there we go. <laughs> All right, Tony. Yeah, that, that fucking downtown scene is something else because of him. So yeah, rest yeah. in peace. In peace. So if you want to watch this episode on YouTube or view some of our older episodes as well, you can go to YouTube.com/slash Road Podcasts. Like, comment, subscribe. We post new episodes every Thursday. Every Thursday, y'all, without fail. So definitely come check out the new episodes on YouTube on Thursdays. And on Fridays on YouTube, we've been posting our older Sunday battles from Twitch. So Jamie and I have been working really hard to get these older battles on YouTube for you guys to watch. So every Friday, you can check these older battles on YouTube. 
And you can also check the newer battles on Sundays at twitch.tv slash roadpodcast. Make sure to follow us on Twitch and uh, subscribe if you can. We just started a new Tuesday on Twitch as well called Road Tuesdays. Basically, everyone in the crew alternates every week. You could check Never one week, Jamie one week, D Miles the next week, and myself the next week. Hopefully, you know, we'll start incorporating some of the homies and have them do some guest spots as well on Tuesdays. So definitely check that out. Twitch.tv slash roadpodcast. And um, uh, good seeing all of y'all. And uh, peace, we're out. Peace. Peace. Peace.